Welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another Entitled Parents Reddit video. In our first story, an entitled father explodes when I won't hand his teenager a firearm. Let's jump right in. So this happened this past weekend, and I'm still kind of shaking my head at this one. I'm an amateur competitive shooter. I compete in several disciplines, but by far my favorite is cowboy action shooting. It's timed, high speed, and a lot of fun. Everyone dresses up as cowboys or cowgirls, uses period weapons, and you pick your own cowboy name. That's right, we're nerds with guns. The best part about the community is that almost everyone tries to give back in some way. The way I choose to is to dress up and donate my time telling folk tales at the local library, minus the firearms of course. Several of the other club members will attend heritage days, fairs, and the like. Last week, I get a call from our club president. He tells me that some of the members would be performing at a heritage festival a couple of counties over from me, and he asked me if I'd pitch in and help. I tell him that I'd love to and ask for the details. He gives me all the information and asks me to do him a favor. He wants me to bring the big gun. I laugh and tell him I'll be happy to. The big gun is my all-time favorite firearm, an 1874 Sharps Quigley, so named because it was used in the Tom Selleck movie Quigley Down Under. I won't go into technical specs, but she's a pig, roughly 4 foot long and weighing somewhere around 13 pounds. She's even made by the same company that made the rifles for the movie. She's too big, too heavy, too expensive, and I love her. Her name is Cora. If you saw the movie, you'll get it. So I show up on Saturday, drag all my stuff to the booth, and basically stand around looking like a knockoff Tom Selleck. Now, there are some strict precautions taken when we do events like this. No live ammunition anywhere on site. We even went through our vehicles beforehand to make sure we didn't leave any in there by mistake. All weapons are transported in securely locked, hard-sided cases, and whenever they are removed, they have trigger locks on them. The club members that are performing will have blank rounds for fake gunfights, but those are kept in separate locked containers. While I'm standing around the booth, I answer any questions people may have. Yes, it's from that movie. Yes, it will shoot that far. No, I don't think I could do it. As this is going on, I see a boy maybe 15 or 16 years old studying my rifle pretty intently. I ask him if he has any questions, and he proceeds to rattle off all the specs of the rifle to me. I'm impressed and tell him that he really knows his stuff. He tells me that Quigley was his grandfather's favorite movie and that he used to watch it with him before he died. We talk about the movie and how awesome Alan Rickman was before he asks if he can hold the rifle. I tell him that I don't have a problem with it if he gets his parents to come over and give their permission. The kid runs off and after a bit he returns with his father. I knew I was in for a rough time when the first words out of his mouth were, why won't you let my son touch the flipping gun? I could tell that this was typical behavior by the way that the kid turned bright red and stared at the ground. All the other club members had gone off for a performance, so I was alone at the booth with the kid and this idiot. I told the man, sir, I have no problem with him touching the rifle. I just wanted your permission first. He's a minor, and I didn't think it was a good idea to hand a firearm to him without your consent. The guy starts to yell at me, saying, I don't see what the big flipping deal is. It's not flipping loaded. I respond with, I take it he has your permission. Of course he flipping does. I tell the boy to go ahead. His face lights up as he hefts the rifle, grinning from ear to ear. He asks if he can take a picture and I agree. I even took my cartridge belt off and let him wear it. Just dummy rounds. Only bullet and casing, no primer or powder. The kid thanks me and starts to walk off before his father stops him. Do you want to play with any of these other guns? I inform the father that I don't own those weapons, but he's welcome to wait and ask the people who do. He starts yelling about how he doesn't need permission and how this is a free country and that he can do what he wants. All this yelling gets the attention of the deputies that are patrolling the fairgrounds. A couple of them walk over and tell him that if he doesn't calm down that he will be asked to leave. He quickly tells his son that they're leaving, but before they walk away I call out to him. 
I pull one of the dummy rounds out of my belt and ask, can he have this? The father mumbled something about not caring, so I hand it to his son. I tell the boy what it is and that he can make a keychain or something out of it. I also hand him a club card with my email written on the back. I said, if you can get permission from another guardian who's willing to bring you out and sign some paperwork, let me know and you can come shoot a match with us. I'll even bring Cora. I just received an email from his mother this evening and they'll both be joining us for a match in a couple of weeks. Okay, there's been a huge response on this story and I want to thank everyone for the kind words and awards. I'll try to give a little more detail. The mother seemed very polite in her email. She was apologetic for the actions of her ex-husband and thanked me for being kind to her son. Turns out that it was her father that the boy used to watch the movie with and her ex is very resentful of anyone in her family. She apparently was made to watch it as well by her father when she was younger, so she is aware of the significance. The son was spending time with his father during the summer and had begged him to take him to the festival. He had heard that there were going to be cowboy performances there and he wanted to see them. Seems that the grandfather had been a fan of all westerns, not just Quigley, and he had shared that love with his grandson. The grandfather had passed last year and the kid took it hard. I am a certified firearms instructor and first responder. I usually serve as safety officer of the day for whichever club I'm shooting at and carry a trauma bag in my truck whenever I go to the range. I hope this clears some things up, but if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Story number two, an entitled mom tries to steal my pre-selected seat. So this happened about two years ago, but I just went on a flight recently and was reminded of it. My family had an event that we had to go to that was across the country. A lot of my family, my mom, dad, sister, and several aunts, uncles, and cousins had already flown out the week before, but I had to work and my daughter had preschool, so we stayed behind and were going to fly separately on the weekend. My aunt had a little girl that she couldn't bring when she went, so she asked that I bring her with me when I and my daughter flew. My aunt's daughter, Grace, was almost two, but she was nonverbal so far, and my daughter, Alori, was a little over three. I was 18. Alori was conceived out of assault, and yes, I was crazy to fly with two toddlers alone. Since I was flying with two toddlers, I wanted to make sure that we had a row to ourselves. I was planning on having Alori by the window, Grace in the middle, and me in the aisle. So I went for the slightly more expensive option of choosing pre-selected seats. We got to be in priority boarding, so we boarded before a lot of the other passengers. We had checked our suitcases, so I just had my backpack with all the things I would need. Jackets, food, toys, my electronics, and a diaper bag. So I had Grace strapped to my front, my backpack on my back, the diaper bag in one hand, and Lori's hand in my other. I was saddled up. I got on the plane with no fuss from the girls, but when I got to our designated seats, yep, you guessed it, an entitled mom and her son, probably about six or seven, were sitting in our row. So our convo went a little like this. Excuse me, these are our seats. We pre-selected them. Um, I'm sorry, honey, but it's open seating and I got here first. You can go find another seat. No, this is my row. I pre-selected it online and paid extra for it. I even showed her my ticket. Honey, that's not how it works on this airline. And unaccompanied minors need to fly next to the flight attendants anyway. I'm now getting exasperated and exhausted, still holding a baby and a backpack. I'm an adult and this is my daughter. Please move or I will need to get the flight attendant. Go ahead. She will tell you the same thing. So of course, I go get a flight attendant and explain the situation and show her my ticket. Enter flight attendant. Ma'am, she did in fact pre-select this row, so I'm gonna need you to move to another seat. Excuse me? She looks genuinely shocked. Please, move to another seat, we have plenty. She gestures to the back where there are literally still whole rows available. No, we got here first and my son needs to be over the wing. The flight attendant looks slightly annoyed at this, but keeps her customer service voice. Why don't I help you find another seat? I'm sure your son will be fine. No, I'm staying in this seat because I got here first. At this point, Alori was getting antsy, standing in one place, 
and the flight attendant noticed. Sweetie, why don't you take a seat right there while I sort this out? I'll bring you an apple juice in a little bit. Alori sat down in a seat on the other side of the row, the one empty seat in the aisle of the plane that was filling up. We are going to have to remove you from the aircraft if you don't move to another seat. The entitled mother finally gets up at this point and drags her child behind her, pushing past us, saying angrily at me and the girls, You teenagers are so entitled. The flight attendant apologizes to me and helps me settle the girls and my things into our row. Wonderful job dealing, by the way. You seem like a very responsible big sister. Actually, the older one is my daughter, the younger one is my cousin. The flight attendant then smiles. Then you are a very good mother. I'll get you an apple juice for the kids. Just make sure you stow it before we take off. Let me know if there is anything else I can do to help you. This is John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to be the first to know when the next one drops, then subscribe and make sure you click on the notifications bell. We would love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.